So hypothesis tests is a way to make a decision about a parameter. Um, this is an example of how to set up just a hypothesis for um, three different examples. Um, so uh, let's start off with um, trying to just identify it. So the average salary of a teacher is more than $30,000. That's the guess that we're making. And so we have to figure out what to actually put down as being the hypothesis. The first step of every hypothesis test is to actually state what is the random variable and the parameter. So, um, in this case, we see the word average. So when you see the word average, that should make you think about the word mean. Um, average mean is a certain type of average. Um, so in this case, um, we are going to assume that we have a normal distribution. So average would be the mean, median, or mode. They all three would be the same. So we're just going to use the mean. So the random variable would be um, what you measured. So you can't measure an average. An average is something you calculate in most cases. Um, there's some rare cases where you can have data that you've already collected at some point, and then you get the averages of all those data, and then you can have measure an average. But normally we don't measure averages. Normally we measure something else. In this case, we're measuring the salary of a teacher. So our random variable is the salary of a teacher. Um, the parameter, again, is mean. So it would be the mean salary of a teacher. Then we just have to put in what the symbol is for mean. So the symbol for mean is mu. Looks like a U with a little line on the front of it. So that's our first step of every hypothesis test. The second step of every hypothesis test is to actually state the hypothesis. So there are two hypotheses to every hypothesis test. There is the null hypothesis, which is written as HO, and there's the alternative hypothesis, which is written as HA. HO is the claim of something that we know to be true. Um, it always involves equal. HA is what we're trying to actually prove. So in this case, we're trying to prove that the average salary of a teacher is more than $30,000. So mu was our symbol for the average salary of a teacher, and we want to show that it's more than, which would be greater than, 30,000. So that would be your HA. I usually figure out HA first, and then HO is just with an equal sign. And there is setting up that hypothesis. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is asking us that less than 10% of students like math. So that doesn't look like there's any information in there about what a parameter might be, but what might help us clue into what the answer might be in this case is the fact that it talks about a percentage. Um, percentages usually give us an idea of proportions. So that percentage right there is usually what tells us that we're dealing with a proportion of some kind. So again, I want to go state my random variable. That's my first step. So my first step again is to state the random variable and parameter. Since proportion is what we're dealing with, proportions come from actually counting something. So we must have counted something in this case. So we're looking at for the number of, um, in this case it talks about students who like math. 
So the number of students who like math would be what we measured out of our um, set of individuals. Then the parameter, again, I've already mentioned, when you see percentages, usually you want to think of proportion, would be the proportion of students who like math. The symbol for proportion, uh, the parameter proportion, is a P. Um, some people like to think of it as being a pi because that would be the Greek letter. So keeping with our notation of Greek letters, we put pi. But then we think of 3.14158 and so forth. So we use the letter P instead when we talk about proportions. So then we can get to our step two, which again is to state the hypothesis. And actually, I should say hypotheses because there are actually two of them. So we have HO, again, that's our null hypothesis, that's the claim. And H1 is, sorry, HA is what we're trying to prove. Some people call it H1, some people call it HA. I prefer HA. Um, and again, what we want to do is go back up here and see what we're trying to say. And so what I do is I look and see, oh, it says less than. So I'm looking to prove that the proportion of students who like math is less than 10%. Um, at this point, you would write the P for proportion because we've already stated up here. This is why we state it, so we know what that letter stands for. Less than would be that symbol there. Instead of writing 10%, we do actually like to write it as a decimal. To remind us, it really is a proportion and not a percentage. And then again, your HO is exactly the same, except that you put an equal sign instead of the less than sign. All right. Let's do one more example of this. This time it's the average age of students in this class differs from 21. So again, I look for words. In this case, I see the word average. So that tells me I'm dealing with mean again. So again, your first step is to state the hypoth um, sorry, the random variable and parameter. Um, so again, we're looking for what did we measure. Again, you can't measure an average, but you can measure ages and then calculate an average. So in this case, our random variable would be the age of students. Now, be specific, it is the age of students in this class. So a lot of times we're very wordy with what we're trying to actually do here. Um, so that we can really be specific of the question we're actually asking. Again, our parameter in this case is mean, because again, mean, um, median, and mode are all the same if we're normally distributed, and we are going to assume that. So we're just going to say mean. Um, it's a better word to use instead of average. Okay, so then we get to stating our hypothesis. So again, there are two, HO, the claim, HA, what we're trying to actually prove. So in this case, it's a little bit different. Um, the two problems we already did had the words more than and less than. This problem has the word, so you do want to look for words like this, but this problem has the word differs. So differs just means it's different from, and different from means it's not equal to. So again, our symbol which I forgot to put up here, but our symbol for mean is mu. So do state it up here so we know what mu stands for in this case. Differs from means it's just not that. And we show that with a not equal. And so it's not equal to 21. And our HO would always be equals. And that's how we state our hypotheses. As a side note, because this one is less than, I'm sorry, because this one is greater than, we call this a um, right tail test.
or a one-tailed test. Um, because this one is less than, we call it a left-tailed test. Or again, one-tailed. And because this one's not equal to, it's called a two-tailed test. And there you have it.